In this episode of Enduro Chronicles, we are in northern France for the legendary Le Touquet race. We also catch up with one of the dinosaurs of the event, local rider Paul Barbara, who has competed in 36 editions of the race and tells us about his memorable moments. Having raced in well over 30 Le Touquets, Paul Barbara has accumulated many souvenirs over the years, as his trophy room can testify. My name's Paul Barbara. I'm 57 years old and I'm participating in my 36th edition of Le Touquet. Barbara's room is littered with the history and charm of the legendary French race, a race he has yet to miss out on. It's a passion for me. I've always loved to ride my bike. This is my life. I love Le Touquet, and until I'm not able to ride anymore, I'll continue doing it. Whatever the conditions, even if it snows, I'll still participate. For the first time in the event's history, a storm has blanketed the course with snow. This race is uh, special. Le Touquet is a city of um, good personality. And the race here, it's one day, many, many people, many uh, riders. It's the most uh, important race uh, in France. 1,000 riders uh, in the start. You know, this is an event you need to, you need to do once in your life. Wherever you are from, you know, in the world, you need to come here once uh, just to enjoy it. Difficult conditions do not deter the 1,000 riders that make their way from the city center to the start line. In the blink of an eye, the riders are cut loose in a frenzied melee of noise and steel. A crucial element of the race is getting to the first corner cleanly. Getting stuck here is not an option. the turgid mix of sand and snow, the more experienced riders will be looking to be the first round the hole shot, the prestigious section of the course roughly eight kilometers from the start. An event such as Le Turquet needs careful planning and execution. Many tons of sand need to be expertly shaped for the course to retain its hard enduro status, something event organizer David Oquier knows all about. I've been a rider for 20 years, racing this particular enduro 26 times. The highlight for me was obviously winning it in 1997. As the race developed and grew, I was given the opportunity because of my experience to help organize it. Experience here with regards to safety is very important. Today, building this track is more difficult. We don't really have any natural elements to contend with. We really just have the beach, which is all flat. So we have to bring in the sand, build the jumps, the curves, and all the technical points to have a great and exciting race. David and his team work hard both before and during the event to ensure the safety of the riders, as well as making the course as challenging as possible. We're using the same design as in 2011, but a couple of changes to the start. The main thing was to decrease the average speed of the overall race, just to make it safer. I think every two years you really need to improve the track. As the course takes shape, the builders are hard at work, looking to create a unique track that both riders and spectators can appreciate. Oh, 
As a man of the north, it's very humbling to be designing this track. Even if I know that I'm basically just a designer, and I'm not a racer anymore. Among the many trophies that Paul Barbara has on display, there is one that stands out in his mind. This is the cup I won for winning the whole shot. I was clocked at 177 kilometers per hour while doing it. For me, this is the greatest souvenir because I can remember the crowd, the whole atmosphere. They were all raising their arms. They were just going crazy for me. I just had to pinch myself. It didn't feel real. I think it has to be my greatest memory of endurance. These are the plaques from my very first 2Ks. And then you have all the sponsors and all that other stuff. The course is very different now. Back then it was more about the adventure in the sand. Now you prepare your bike more or less in the same way. But in general, the race, it's just not the same thing. It's about the adventure. So that was my trophy room, and now I'll take you to the garage so you can see my bike. With the race well underway, the crowd anxiously awaits the riders as they make their way around the course. The frozen sand has now thawed, and the ruts and bumps from the thousand dirt bikes are chopping up the course, making the riding difficult. Estonia's Tana Leok is the early leader as he charges his way through the field, making the riding look easy. Hot on his heels is local favorite Jean-Claude Mousset. I win two times the, the race here. My team, uh, the first time, it's very special. One local rider who will not be completing the race is seven-time Turquay winner Anon Demestre, who finds the conditions too tough to handle. In my opinion, the course is just too dangerous for me. With all the snow and the variable conditions, it's a really tricky course, and frankly, I have no desire to hurt myself. With one of the favorites out of the race, it's up to the others to step up. But which of them will claim the prestigious 2012 Le Touquet title? So that was the garage, and this is the bike that I will be using for this year's 2K. It's a 450cc Yamaha 2011 edition. There's nothing really special about it. It's really the rider that makes the difference on a bike. This instead is the bike that I used in the 2002 2K Enduro, the one where I claimed the whole shot. I like to keep it as a souvenir. The engine has been slightly modified, so is the exhaust, but it's nothing special. It still runs, and, and that's about it. <laughs> Back to the race, and tension is mounting as Jean-Claude Mousset is beginning to pull away from the pack. The local favorite looks in perfect shape as he glides through the course. All of a sudden, disaster strikes. Mousset goes down, and then is run into by another rider. 
On hearing the news, Estonia's Tanel Leok makes a charge for the lead. This is just what the Estonian needed after being overtaken by Musse earlier in the race. One last smooth pit stop for Musse, and the title looks set to be his. Tanel Leok, though, is not far behind. Estonian Express makes one last-ditch attempt at regaining the lead from Jean-Claude Mousset. In the end, Leoc cannot rein in the man in the number one bib, and Jean-Claude Mousset sails through the finish line. Greeted by a frenzied group of photographers, the title of Leitoke Champion 2012 is his. All victories are special, but to have one here again, simply fantastic. The Frenchman claims the top spot on the podium ahead of Estonia's Tanel Leoc and Milko Potisek, also of France. On the next episode of Enduro Chronicles, we are in Tuscany, Italy, for another brutal battle on a bike. Britain's Graham Jarvis will look to win back the Hellsgate title he won in 2010. In addition, we catch up with another Enduro legend, Andreas Lettenbichler of Germany. Will the German be able to beat Jarvis in Italy? Find out next time.